tell you what impact LeBron's comments are having on his image, and it ain't good. Plus, is the entire Jalen Ramsey episode a good or bad thing for the NFL? And we'll ask Paul Feinbaum if the dogs have ruined their shot at the college football playoff. Second hour, first take, now. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to First Take. We're coming to you live from above the Heineken River deck at Pier 17. LeBron James said he's unaware of Hong Kong protesters trampling and burning his jersey. This coming after the king struck a nerve with his comments on China this week. LeBron was adamant that this will be the last time he'll address the turmoil between China and the NBA that resulted from Daryl Morey's tweet in support of Hong Kong. Here's the king yesterday. I plan on being here, being the captain of this team trying to figure out a way how we can win a championship. That's, that's my main goal right now. Um, I feel like I talked about it yesterday. Um, I tweeted out a couple of responses to people not understanding, you know, my knowledge of what it came from, from my brain and, and, and for me learning from the situation. I'm talking about it now and uh, I, probably, I won't talk about it again. We're not politicians. Um, I think it's a, it's a huge political thing, um, but we are, we are leaders and, and we can step up at times, but there's times where I'm not saying in this particular instance, but, you know, if you don't feel like you should speak upon things, you, you shouldn't have to. Here's an excerpt from esteemed columnist Christine Brennan in the USA Today. LeBron James is now a weakened messenger for whatever it is that he's going to be selling, be it products or politics. His significant voice has been diminished. This is that big of a development. It's rare that any athlete can become a quintessential 21st century cultural figure, equal parts sports superstar, and esteemed voice of a generation who throws that away in a few sentences. LeBron James, that's who. Jay Will back here with us. Wow. Stephen A, I'm going to start with you. Strong words there by Christine Brennan. How bad does this all look for LeBron? I don't think it's that bad. Um, and allow me to explain. First of all, let me say that Christine Brennan is one of the best. Mm -hmm. One of the best in the business. I've known her for years and I have profound respect for her. And I don't think that anything that she said is wrong when you're talking about mass appeal. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are times when you compartmentalize things. And it's about black appeal, too. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at LeBron James speaking on, on, on this issue, let me be very, very clear about what I'm about to say. He was wrong to call Daryl Morey misinformed. Mm -hmm. Daryl Morey is not misinformed. Daryl Morey may have made a mistake by tweeting out something instead of expounding on it and speaking verbally about it. And he may have been a bit wrong in sending the tweet out instead of waiting a week or so later when folks got out of China and was back in America. But I wouldn't classify him as misinformed. Yeah, he said uneducated. He, he, misinformed. He said misinformed too, but okay. misinformed and uneducated. No, he was wrong about that. And when he said think about something, not just yourself, think about others. Well, clearly, Daryl Morey was thinking about others because he was thinking about the human rights issues taking place in Hong Kong and what people were protesting. So the person that came across as a bit misinformed in that regard, in terms of what they elocuted, was LeBron James. But where I come to LeBron James' defense is this insatiable appetite for folks to clamoring for him to speak out on this particular issue. This is a geopolitical issue. You can slice it any way you want to. This is an international issue when you bring China into consideration and you think about the multitude of American businesses doing business over there in China, from Cook and Apple to Musk and Tesla, and the list goes on and on. The hundreds of companies that do business, our government doing business with China. To ask this black man, that is LeBron James, even though he's an iconic brand and figure and all of that other stuff, to insist that we hear from him and then to meticulously go about the business of carving out every single word that he says and what he articulates and elocute and how proper or improper it was or whatever the case may be, it really rakes my nerves. And the reason why it rakes my nerves is for one simple reason. Again, I have respect. I don't think anybody that knows anything about basketball wouldn't have respect for Daryl Morey, not just as an executive. He's a good man, okay? I don't think he handled this particular situation ideally, which his own owner, Tillman Fertitta, pointed out. But I think it's important to point out, you have a middle-aged white executive hmm. who started this whole brouhaha, and then after that, obviously silenced, he gets to go sit someplace. We ain't hear a damn word from him. But, my, but LeBron James 
is asked to speak on this issue. I just don't like it. I'm not saying that I understand that he has to speak on it because he is who he is. And people are saying, all right, James Harden spoke on it and his words weren't ideal. And LeBron spoke on it. But it's like, damn, didn't really have anything to do with them. And now they're in the middle I of totally the I totally disagree with this point of view. And I've heard it in the media a lot. First of all, let me say, as I said yesterday, if it were a, an African-American so, so uh, about the issue that Daryl Morey, the white executive, can go sit in the corner, he doesn't. And now the young black athlete okay. has to. Okay. If Daryl Morey were uh, an African-American executive and tweeted out the exact same thing, and the best player in the NBA happened to be like Larry Bird right now, and he had, and he had tweeted things in the past like, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice mm -hmm. everywhere mm -hmm. and has been a social justice warrior when the cost was low, mm -hmm. but now the cost is high. Mm -hmm. I would also want to hear from him. Now, I understand LeBron James has a billion dollars of business in China or something like that. And I would probably be very careful with what I said for a lot less money than that. But there is a name for not standing up on principles that you've always stood up for in the past when money's on the line, it's called selling out. That's what this has to be called, because that's what it is. I'm not saying wow. that I'm holding him to a, that, that I wow. would reach the standard of not selling out, but that's what this is. And what do I mean by that? Daryl Morey sent out a tweet. He said, the tweet was, you know, stand with the people of Hong Kong. What he's really saying is, I support freedom. That's all he's saying is, I support freedom. Now, not, now, now, the timing of the tweet, I agree with LeBron. Hey, our guys are over there. We have a lot of business there. Maybe, the, But really what we're saying is because we know the, the authoritarian Chinese government is so sensitive that saying I support freedom will have them cancel business, um, we're saying that we should respect that and respect the authoritarianism in the government, right? Um, essentially, so we're saying bad Daryl Morey, bad Daryl Morey. And even now, it's still bad Daryl Morey. The issue of Daryl Morey's timing, et cetera, has been talked about. And then it moved eventually to LeBron because anything that goes on in basketball, people want to hear from LeBron. Just as Daryl Morey, you could say, hey, how committed was he really to this? He sent out a tweet. That's a real quick hit of dopamine. You can virtue signal, low cost, send out a tweet. Oh, my God, look at the ramifications. Now he backs off. How committed was he really to it? But LeBron, by the same token, if a threat to justice anywhere, which includes China, it's, it, it, if injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, if you tweeted that out, so was that just a low-cost virtue signaling for you too? Or do you really believe that? Because I thought he really believed it. I lost you after you called LeBron a sellout. I mean, I think those are really strong words for a guy that's really put himself at the forefront of a lot of things going on in this country. Um, I think what it's, would you I, call I, it? I think, it, I think you're in a lose. I didn't call him a sellout, by the you, way. But you, you said that. I said it's called selling out. And I also, said, I also said, Jay, that were I in the same situation for a lot less money, I might do the same thing. What is it called when you back off on principle for money? So, no, I, I, well, maybe it's called recalibrating and rethinking your position on things. Even though, like, you're, LeBron James is one because of the most voice-like people that we've ever had in this, in this country. But LeBron James is not bigger than the NBA. I think sometimes we, we want these individual athletes to be bigger than the entity in which they play for. So if LeBron James were to say things at that given moment, that would affect international business. That would affect the bottom line of a multi-billion dollar league. There would be repercussions for LeBron in that regard. I'm not saying I condone LeBron not saying anything because I think the optics of it look bad. I'm just saying it's easy for people out here to sit up here and say what they would do in that situation when they would never be in that position in the first place. Everybody just commentating, oh, you're a seller. I would do this. I would do that. You don't know what you would do if you were in that situation. I just said I probably would do the same thing he's doing for a lot less money than a billion dollars. But let me tell you what's going to happen with this. I, I hear you. I'm not, I'm not going at you. I'm just saying my own perspective, my lane. This is going to be an ongoing issue for the NBA. This is the beginning of it. This is a traditional American-like company that is trying to build an international span, bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So there are issues happening in India. Mm -hmm. When we try to expand there, are we going to allow our players to talk about stuff like that? Because now we're, we're an international platform. We're no longer a domestic platform. We allow Indies Canada to talk about issues happening in Turkey. Like, are we going to try to expand business in Turkey? Like, these are things well, that we have to now think about. That was a little different because that was connected, obviously, to his family. Do you think it would have been better if LeBron hadn't said anything? I, I, I know he was I, almost forced to speak, but based on... How this, is, this has panned out. What happens in this, LeBron James is the best basketball player in the world. LeBron James is not the best politician in the world. 
Uh, he's not you trained to be a politician. What's so, so my thing, hold, on, here, hold, on, here, hold here, that. Thought. I think you have to be tactical with your words. Hold you have to thought. understand that anything now, all that stuff's going to be politicized. Yeah, I'm just wondering hold if he the, came out and said this, it would have better. He didn't say anything. We'll take a commercial break. Let's take a commercial break. Because we got to talk about that. We'll come back to this. Everybody's staying here. Much more on this LeBron China situation. Please don't go anywhere.